It's another new to me style brew day. This time it is an alt beer. One that I'm not entirely sure I've ever had or really know what it should taste like in the end. But it's up next. It is an alt beer tonight. This is the first time I'm making one. I have to imagine I've tried one at one point, but I honestly don't know that I had. But it's a, I'm reading the BJC, B, BJC, ABCD, man, what is it? BJCP guidelines, uh, style guidelines. I came across that one and trying to find what styles I wanted to tackle and learn more about. This one sounds like one I should know and should already enjoy. So we're gonna find out if I can make one. Uh, whether or not I'll be able to tell if I've made one or not, I'm not sure. But I do have time, obviously, between fermentation and bottle conditioning. I, I certainly have time to find one and try one to compare it to, which I'm, I'm going to try to do. And if I find one, I'll see if I can incorporate that in this, in this episode. As far as the name goes, because this is Big Monster Brewing and I met, which I forgot to say again in the beginning, so let's say it now. Uh, I named it after, since I don't know exactly what I'm going to be tasting or what I should be tasting, I named it after a German big monster movie. I don't know if you'd call it a German kaiju movie, but it's a German monster movie called Invisible, Invisible Beast. I figured I'm kind of going into this blind, might as well name it after a monster you can't see. The movie is so obscure, I can't even find a video clip of it, but I have found this picture. So there you go. So this is going to be uh, another mash in the bag, one gallon boil inside again. We're still in that weird cold snap in Orlando and the cold isn't really bothering me tonight. It's the wind. It is crazy windy out there. So I don't really want the wind to be cooling down my boil pot or even blowing out the flame on the propane burner. So we're going to be boiling inside again. In fact, we're going to be doing everything inside, starting with the strike water, which we're going to go to now. All right, we're off to a great start. I have water in the back of my car and I cannot find my keys. I mean, there is like nowhere left to look for my keys. I cannot find my keys. I'm not even joking. I'm not even telling you how long that took. All right, that tops off 2.54 gallons. And you probably noticed not only this episode, but last episode, now that I mentioned it, I didn't think the Say it then, you probably noticed that I'm back to the distilled water, even though I had just touted that I'd done a water profile on my home water. Well, it turns out three of the chemicals, well, two, technically, two chemicals in my kit had already expired. One of them expired, like, well, it was February of 2018, and I was doing it on the 28th. So it was, you know, you call that expired. One was expired for well over a year. I can't believe I didn't check those before I did that. So I don't trust my numbers and I have the replacement chemicals on order and I'll do it again, but they're not here yet. So it's back to this distilled water, this purified water. I think is what, yeah, that's what it says on the label and uh, mineral additions based on that for this brew and probably the next couple until those chemicals come and I have the time that I do have to uh, do that water profile again. Here is the grist, starting with two pounds of Pilsner, eight ounces of Munich Light, 3.2 ounces of Vienna Malt, 1.6 ounces of Cara Munich One, and 0.8 ounces of Carafa Type Three. So I'm gonna go mill these up and get them into the bag ton. Just did a quick check on the temperature of the grains and check it out. New thermometer, and does it say it on here? Uh, it doesn't say it on here, but I know it says it on the box. There you go. Second item, or whatever you want to call it, benefit feature, waterproof. I got a feeling I'm going to put that to the test again at the last episode. Just waiting for the strike water to get to about 158. Right when it hits uh, 156, I think I'm going to kill the heat here because the grains are 74 and a half degrees. In fact, there we go. There, let's kill the heat. See what that raises to. I might need to drop it a little bit, but I don't want to get over 158 because the grains are slightly warmer than last time. And look, I took the thermometer out. Wow, look at that. I was targeting 153. I got 153, so. All right, I'm gonna seal this up and let it rest for an hour. All right, timer's going. As you can see, we're all sealed up. I did want to mention 
that the second I put that water in, actually, I wanted to make this comment uh, that last recording, but I was shocked that we were right at 153, so I wanted to quick seal this up. But I wanted to say, as soon as I put that hot water in, like the first thing that struck me was the roast, and it has to be that Carafa 3. That's the most heavily roasted malt in there. It smelled like someone just flipped on the coffee maker. After I stirred everything in, kind of went away, and you got the usual smash smell, but it was like, put that water in, bam, coffee. So now I'm going to, hey. Well, I messed all that up. You probably saw a giant time shift there. I'm going to go way out the hops now instead of filming one phone with another. So we got one single hop, two additions, but just one hop. It's Hersbrucker. Hersbrucker? Hersbrucker. I used this before in another video, and I bet you I said the name wrong, or if I had to pronounce it twice, I probably didn't say it the same way twice because I really do. Let's get that booger off there. It wasn't really a booger. Two additions, 60 minutes and 15 minutes, and... I actually got three of these cups out thinking that one was not going to be 15 minutes. I had it ready for the World Flock tablet, so it's going to share a cup with the 15-minute uh, edition. So I'm going to weigh them out now. All right, here's the 60-minute edition. It is 0.35 ounce. And come on, almost there. I know I'm going to ever do it. I know it. No, I got it. I don't know if it came out on camera. I hope it did. I hope it did because that never happened. So this is going to be 60 minutes. I got something to say about these little cups in a minute here, but let's finish this out. This last one is going to be 0.15 ounce, which, let's see, this is getting pretty light. I don't know if that's coming, if you can see any of that on the camera. That might be 0.15. If not, I do have a whole other bag of them, but I think that we got at least 0.15 here. Oh, yeah. We got 0.12. Oh, there's definitely, there's more in there. In fact, I'm hoping I use these again this go around because there's not like a big addition in there. There's just enough to, I don't know what. See, this is what I was talking about. That first one was a fluke. Let's see. That's got to be 0.15 by now. And there's stuff on here. There we go. 0.15. And that's going to be 15 minutes. And what I was going to say about these little cups was, I'm going to say almost out, but I'm not Super almost out. In fact, let me get one of the clear ones. I have like another sleeve. The, the, the sleeve I opened, uh, I got, I don't know if you can hear that. I just opened a package and left pack, packing paper on the floor and the cats are having an insane time. So I'm just going to talk over it. Um, what was I saying? The last sleeve that I opened, I'm down to like, I don't know, 10 of these or so. And I still have another sleeve left. But they're, they're pretty durable. I mean, for what they're doing, they're just holding... You know, not even an ounce of hops, not even a half ounce of hops. What I should do, and I can't believe I didn't think of this before, I should just take, like, you know, 10 of these and write, like, 60, 15, 20, 10, 5, 1, uh, flame out, whatever the numbers are that I use for normal hop additions, just reuse the cups. That would have been a much more economical choice than when I bought them, thinking I found something I'm going to use all of. So now I can prolong the... Uh, that didn't sound right. Now I can, I can use them. There go the cats again with that freaking paper. Yeah, we're talking about you. Look, you already tore some up. Do you know how much sweeping your mother's gonna have to do when she gets home? A super important part to this beer, as you can see from the label, it's deteriorating because this bottle is really starting to sweat. Took it out of the fridge and trying to get the uh, room temperature. It's the yeast. This is White Labs WLP 036 Dusseldorf Alt. And, uh, well, the date that I'm recording is the 8th, so you can see it's not very old. And if you've seen my other uh, yeast experiment, or uh, not really experiment, but trial episodes, you've probably seen how I propagate and split the yeast up into these vials for small batches. And that's exactly what I did with this. So let's take a look at that quick. So I read about it again today to remind myself why I exactly picked this other than the, the name. Uh, but it is a traditional alt beer style yeast from Dusseldorf, Germany. And this is a, a Dusseldorf style alt beer. And it pretty much says that it produces a clean uh, beer, lets the malts do what they do, let whatever hops you put in there give their contribution. And it just it's clean fermenting and lets the other ingredients kind of shine. So this will be my first time using it. And like I said, I have five other vials and of course I can always bank some of it if I end up really liking it. But this will not be the last I use this. I, 
I not only separated it to get this one gallon vial, but I also, well, this vial isn't one gallon, but this vial for a one gallon batch, but I intend to use it on some other styles down the line as well. And here's Annie the brew mutt, helping like she always does on brew day. That's not funny. Holy crap, I just noticed that this new thermometer has a freaking bottle opener on it. So I think it was like kismet or fate or whatever you call it for me to destroy that other one. That is like perfect. Okay, let it do its drip draining for 10 minutes. And now we are quickly filling up the uh, boil kettle. And if you're curious if I bought a longer piece of hose, I did not. In fact, I really am no hurry because this is working out just fine. While I was Vorloffing, I never quite got the murkiness out of the wart. I said last episode that it's not always crystal clear, but this it didn't really seem to clear up much from the first uh, four cups I took to the last four cups. And uh, just kind of had that murkiness to it. Not even a haze, just a murkiness to it. So I may have to find this in the end. I don't find a lot of my one-gallon batches. It's just an extra step for sampling. But in this case, uh, I'm going to take a look at what... All beers typically look like pictures I've seen. They seem crystal clear. So I might have to find this one. And, uh, well, that's actually looking way down the line. Who knows? That's that's really putting the cart before the horse. That's putting the findings in before the yeast. Ah, but I'm chump. All right, let's get to the boil. All right, that is definitely a rolling boil. But this time, I'm actually going to set the timer for 75-minute boil. An hour and 15 minutes. Not quite 90 but a little more than 60. My last brew on the stove top, the numbers were a little low, just a little short. I think it was, it came out at 1.050 and it was projected to be 1.053. So not a huge difference, but I think that had to do with the fact that uh, my boil off rate was based on propane and outside mainly propane, which is typically a more vigorous boil from beginning to end, whereas this one kind of gets adjusted up and down and uh, kind of really slows down when that first top edition comes in. So I think that extra 15 minutes will get me my numbers, maybe a little higher. I'm hoping it'll get right on, but we'll see. Kind of another experiment going on in this one. All right, there's one hour. Well, actually, that's the one hour countdown. It was 15 minutes, so I just dropped in the 60 minute edition, which was 0.35 ounces of Hurstbrooker, if I'm not mistaken. And now I've got a bit of a waiting game. Nothing happens for another 45 minutes. But for you, it's going to be right now. So we're just about at 15 minutes. And there goes the wharf lock. I think you saw that if you're watching or paying attention. I'm not sure where I was going with that. And now that I've already put everything in, I can't go back and record. So the wharf lock went in and the last of the Hurstbrecker hops are in. Now I just wait it out. I'm going to set up the ice bath to cool this down. Six minutes to go in the boil. And I don't know if it's my imagination because I put the extra 15 minutes in. But this does look like, uh, what was it, lower or less in volume than the last stove top boil was when I was almost done. So I'm thinking that extra 15 minutes did good. I'll find out when we get to the end that I can actually measure the starting gravity of what I'm going to pitch the yeast into. So for that starting gravity, we're looking for 1.051. Like I said, I gave it an extra 15 minute boil. And let's see if we can see this. Yeah, that's a little high. So maybe uh, <laughs> five minutes was what I wanted. Oh well, that just means more alcohol in the end if it attenuates all. It is time to taste the alt beer at least on camera. And this is one of the, this is the first time and probably will be one of the few times that you see me use a grown up sized glass for this because full disclosure, I have tasted this and I've got quite a bit to talk about. I was going to say, hopefully not too long, but I think it's better to say, go ahead and settle in. You might want to get a beer for this. I'll do my best to be brief, but I have some things to say, so hopefully this bottle is, is worth talking about as much as the one I had just about 24 hours ago. So let's give it a pour. You heard the hiss. Oh, I over poured. That's all right. I'll make the best of it. I 
as soon as I poured that, I knew that was going in way too fast. So that was quite a vigorous pour. Uh, I'm going to let that, I will let that settle and I'll probably put most of that back in the glass. Let's take a look at the color. I don't know how well it's coming out. It is a beautiful mahogany brown when it's held up to the light, which is tough to do on this camera. It's actually coming out darker on camera than I'm seeing it here. Fairly clear. If I were to do this, I think I'll, I'll blow the lead and say when I do this again, I'll probably do some findings on it. And I also have the style sheets again, because as you've seen in this video already, this is the first time I've done this. And this is, well, technically now my second alt beer, but the first alt beer I've had. So I really want to see where I'm at on this because, well, we'll get to it in a minute. So let's go to appearance since that's what we're looking at. Color ranges from light brown to deep copper color, stopping just short of brown. Bronze orange is most common. Brilliant clarity, thick, creamy, long-lasting, off-white head. We're almost there. It is a little dark. In fact, I think if it was clear, if I did findings on it, the color would be dead on. It's really, it's unfortunate that the camera's not picking up the color right. I can see it. I can see, I'm looking at the camera with this eye, looking at the mirror of that eye, and they're not the same. We're really close. If it was clear, I think it'd be right there. The head. Oddly enough, the camera is picking up the head pretty well. That is off-white. <laughs> it's thick, long-lasting. Much better than the California Common. This thing is going to stick around. It may even stick around for my entire diatribe. And that would be something. I really want to have all this beer in here. So, did I cloud it up a little bit? Not really. Not really. It's no worse than it was before. So, let's go to Aroma and talk about that. Clean yet robust and complex aroma of grainy, rich malt and spicy hops with restrained, low to low medium, Fruity esters. The malt character reflects German-based malt varieties with rich baked bread and nutty, toasty bread crust notes. The hop aroma may vary from moderate to low and can have a peppery, spicy, floral, herbal, or perfumey character associated with the Sazer-type hops. So let's see what we have for aroma. The malt aroma I get is that, that kind of toasted bread character mentioned, which was a characteristic a descriptor I couldn't put my finger on last night. That's what the, I think the most malt character comes out of here. There is a lot of spice, depending on your word of spice, there's not like hot spice, like a pepper spice or any of the pepper family, green pepper, brown pepper, white pepper, brown pepper, black peppers, I meant to say white pepper, you know, habaneros, uh, uh, jalapenos, all those. I'm not talking that. I'm talking like spice rack spices. Like there's, I can almost get, there's a, a, a pleasant amount of clove and I can't stand clove, but with this, it works. There's a little bit of star anise in there and almost, almost a licorice quality, but like you really have to look for it. And there's, there's definitely just a, a touch of the fruity esters rolling off the head right now. And that is a, like a very uh, pleasant, not a citrus, but more of a kind of like the, the more the passion fruit, star fruit family where it's, it's just such an interesting combination of aromas, which is, um, again, not knowing anything about an alt beer just was a very pleasant surprise. So let's get the flavor before I go on too long. This might make it long. Oh my God, this thing is long here. I'll, I'll do my best to zip through it. Assertive hoppy bitterness, well-balanced with a sturdy yet clean, crisp malt character. The malt presence is moderate to medium high to high attenuation, but considerably rich, complex, and somewhat grainy malt flavors can remain. Some fruity esters, especially cherry-like, may survive in the lagering period. A long-lasting medium dry to dry bitterness or nutty finish reflects both on the hop bitterness and malt complexity. Spicy, peppery, or floral hop flavor can be moderate to low. No roasted malt flavors or harshness. The apparent bitterness level is sometimes masked by the malt character. The bitterness can seem low to moderate if the finish is not very dry. Light, sulfury, or minerally character optional. Minerally. I'm not sure what that would be, but never mind. Let's get to, <laughs> let's get to the tasting and see where we're at. Oh, it's, this might be one of the more complex beers I've made without knowing what I was doing. There is so much going on here in such a good way. And the one thing I'm going to note before I even get to the descriptors of lagering, I didn't lager this. This was done with the WLP 036 Dusseldorf, Dusseldorf Alt strain from White Labs. And I 
just fermented it for two weeks at its suggested temperature range. I think with all the flavors that are going on here, they would probably end up melding together even better if I did lager it, which is something to consider the next time I make this. I didn't know that was something you did with an alt beer until I investigated more on the alt beer, especially last night when I tasted it. But let me get back to the taste because like I said, there's just so much going on in this. For this, there is a bit of a roast on the palate as it goes through. And I mean bit. It's layered on top of a very, very rich malt character that is not at all cloyingly sweet. There's just enough, it's, there's like their caramel flavor without it being like tooth enamel rotting caramel. Just, it's this nice, pleasant, there's almost a heaviness to it as far as the feel, even though there's obviously nothing extremely, you know, dense about it. It's, it's, it's not a thick beer by any means. It's the same as any other beer I've made but it just feels thicker in a really good way. It just kind of coats your mouth and everything hangs out there. And that's just the malts. The hops, the, the bitterness. Here. I'm going to step back and say that the bitterness is definitely coming from the roasted characteristics of the, of the, um, of the malts. It's not coming from the hops. The hops are there just to kind of carry it, the entire flavor through and make it a well-rounded beer. Now, with that, there is a perceivable hop bitterness to it, but nothing super specific that stands out. It's, uh, it's, not, a, uh, it's not a piney. It's not grassy. It's not citrusy. It's not herbal. Uh, maybe a little fruity. And I think the fruits are kind of accentuating the malt and making a little bit of a res, or not raspberry, like a little bit of a raisin, but in, in a good way, not too much. Maybe a little bit on the prune or plum side. Uh, I think the hops are kind of drawing out some of those flavors of the malt which is actually really kind of incredible. So I'm going to taste it again and see what more I can describe with it. Cause last night I was, could not stop talking about it. The spices that's the spices really come at the end of the uh, tasting and definitely on the finish, like uh, just before the finish. And then they kind of, they wash away, but the spices I was talking about and again, I know it does say, actually I was kind of surprised to read. It said spicy peppery. I'm not getting spicy. Maybe there's a little hint of it. Maybe. Maybe if you really try, but there is more of kind of that, that it's almost like it was made to be a Christmas ale and you ran out of spices and you kind of just like shook the dregs that was on the side of you. Like you needed a little bit of cinnamon. It, was, it could be a little bit of cinnamon flavor, but like your, your allspice, your, um, your cloves. It's like the, you went to the, the cupboard and they were empty. So you kind of like, you know, like tapped it or scraped your finger in and swirled it around like you barely had any spices and this it works it's which is funny because it's not necessarily a flavor profile i tend to like in my beers but this i'm really enjoying it i take one more look at that i mean i had a full class at the beginning of this the complexity of this is just incredibly surprising i didn't expect it from what i put in it i mean i i was familiar with all the malts and certainly the hops that i put into it not the yeast strain I'm not sure what, what that's doing to make this what it is, but this is incredibly complex, but in a very pleasing way. It's not like distractingly complex where like there's so much going on. I can't lock on to something that I enjoy, you know, that kind of snobbery. It's just a really, it's, it's, I could sit here and just down these over and over and not notice how complex they are. There's the complexity works so well, if that makes any sense. I'm finding the complexity because I'm trying to, make it better, learn the style and express what it tastes like on these videos. If I weren't doing that, I could just go through these like insanely quickly with that without, Oh my God, 12 minutes. I don't know how much I edited it out, but we're at 12 minutes on this with that. I'm going to say, I am going to, I have a change of plan again for the sunshine challenge. I have six of these bottles left. I'm going to hold on to three and I'm absolutely going to enter this. I don't know if it's in style because I don't know all beers that well, but I really, really want some feedback on this one because I am pretty excited about how this came out and pretty excited about learning this style. It almost might sound like I'm kind of throwing that entry away because I'm only allowed three entries, but I, I'm excited enough about this beer. I'm willing to take that chance. Again, I have no expectations of winning anything in this. I want to come out with it. I want to come out. I want to, I want to submit my best efforts and get some good feedback and learn how I can pr improve them. 
And I think this just somehow turned into one of my best efforts without me having really any um, experience on the style. So that's what I'm going to do. I apologize that this review went on long, but I, I did say I had a lot to talk about and I could still, but I'm going to stop now because by the time I'm done, this recording is going to be 15 minutes and I still have to edit it. Hopefully I can cut it down if I hadn't. Sorry. And thank you for hanging in there. Let me not belabor the point anymore. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, comment, share, like all the things that help the channel spread the word, have fun, leave some comments, brew some beer. I'll see you in the next episode.